Okay, so we're entering the second part of the tutorial, which is about ramps. And ramps are about subsurface scattering. So let's first get into subsurface scattering. So this is um, my explanation. So let's imagine that you have a table and it's a wooden table and you put a piece of glass on top of it. Well, now you have one surface on top of another and light that hits the glass well some of it goes through but also some of it reflects off of the glass and um hits your eye and it appears to be shiny while some of the light that goes through the glass hits the table and reflects off the table and basically becomes the color that you see along with maybe you'll see a little bit of shininess of the table depending on how polished the wooden table was before you put the glass on top of it. Well, that's subsurface scattering. Subsurface scattering is basically a situation where you have multiple layers or multiple mediums. So you have a, let's say you have a, a light ray that comes from this direction and hits, um, hits the surface and it reflects off, but also some of the light is transmitted through and it hits the second surface and then, um, reflects off as well but as you can see there's a ref refraction angle change well the light is reflected so some of the the, the ray angle changes um, as it enters a new medium and then as it comes out it also changes again as it changes mediums from uh, from air to hair because this is actually a uh, diagram of subsurface scattering in hair. So this is a strand of hair, hair follicle, whatever you want to call it. And as you can see, it, some of the light is bouncing directly off the surface and then some of the light is bouncing off of the back surface. But in the process, the light is partially reflect, refracted or bent as it's entering and also bent as it's ex exiting. But in the case of here, there's some light that actually goes completely to the follicle, which is transmitted out. Um, hair is a hard to, hair is hard to model when you're modeling in a 3D program, and it's also hard to shade it properly. Um, and so there's been a, th this is one of the reasons why um, surface, surface scattering is, um, pursued in some of these light models. Okay, so there are other surfaces that have um, subsurface scattering besides hair and tables with glass on them. One of the main things that has subsurface scattering is skin. And so in the case of skin, instead of it being um, like a tube or a piece of glass and a table, what's going on is you have the surface of the skin and then you have your dermis or your basal lamina or the top of your layer of fat cells or your muscle cells. Basically, you have multiple layers um, when it comes to modeling flesh. And so light goes in uh, to the skin and hits the dermis and then some of it is also going to go through and hit the basal lamina and some of that's going to go through and hit the fat layer and some is going to go through and hit the muscle layer so you have three or four different layers when it comes to skin but every time that ray of light um, hits a new layer it can be deflected and it'll come out um, well it'll hit the layer above it and then also be reflected somewhat so you have all this bending so if you look at your arm what you'll notice is that um and this particularly is more noticeable in bright light but if you look at your arm hold your arm arm up notice that in the opposite direction of the light source you have a, a shadow which should be pretty dark and then on the same air same section as to where the light source is you should have more of a skin tone basically your skin is being lit up so you can see it but the air that's in between the shade shaded area and where your skin tone is 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 at you might see a little bit of a, a reddish hue that reddish hue is due to 
the light from the lower layers being scattered out. Now, my theory is that the light is actually being scattered out in all different directions, but you, it's being kind of drowned out by the bright light, but shining on your skin so you don't see it um, immediately. You don't see it where the light is the strongest. You basically see your skin color, so you're seeing more of that primary um, ref ref reflection. And then as you go away from the light, you start to see more of the secondary reflections coming from your, the uh, internal part of your skin and muscle system. Also, um, in the case of the table and the hair follicle, well, in the case of the table anyway, the light that gets reflected is going to be first the color of the light that went in. That's the reflection you're going to get off the glass. And then you're also probably going to get kind of a table color that's um, being reflected as the secondary reflection. And that's true in the case of um, skin subsurface shadowing, uh, subsurface scattering. But I'm also thinking that there may be a little bit of a prism effect going on. And so I think as the light is uh, going into the lower layers, it may be getting kind of split up somewhat. And then when it's coming out, some of that light's getting absorbed and then some of it's kind of um, coming out at different angles. So this is kind of a um, illustration of subsurface scattering in skin. So you have this area would basically be the skin tone, this would be the shadows, and this would kind of be the red area in between. And this line is probably a little bit harsh. Um, but this is a, this is a model of subsurface scattering for skin. It's not an actual example of subsurface scattering for skin. Or this line would be a lot less harsh. Also, if you notice, there's a little bit more of a yellowish, orange color here, and it get, gets a little bit more red, and finally we start to get darker. So I'm thinking that there may be a little bit of a prism effect going on, and then some of the yellow wavelengths are actually escaping the skin closer to the light source where when you start to go away from the light source the only thing that's basically um, making it out of the skin is more red and then as you go even further less light is making it out and so it's becoming darker so that's um, basically my understanding of subsurface scattering and subsurface scattering of skin um, so how do you fix subsurface scattering. Well, there are two ways to fix subsurface scattering. One is with a round image and then the other one is with a square image. But basically what you're doing is you're remapping or you're trying to remap the n.l function in such a way that um, you're getting sort of a reddish hue close to the edges um, of the of the light source as we go into the shadows. So I'm going to stop this video and um, we're going to basically show you, a, I'm basically going to show you how to set up a madcap and we're going to roll with the madcap for now and then maybe later on I'll come back and show you how to do a 2D version. Um, so that's it for now.